the big picture of being a being a shipbuilder here at Newport New Shipbuilding, it's, I mean, it's really hard to put into words. And it's hard to put into words for my family and my friends that have no idea and, and can't even start to begin to imagine what I'm talking about. So I think the big picture of it and the big importance of it is that we truly are helping defend our Navy men and women. And every single ship we build, every single piece of steel we touch, and you know, bolt we screw in, whatever it may be, every single day here at the shipyard is about, you know, one, two, three, four, five years from now, sending off a ship full of people our own age that are going off to defend us. And, and our goal is to send them off safe and get them home safe to the best of our ability. And I say home because I want them to come home. And I know that every single piece and every single ownership we have will get our Navy men and women home. Birthplace of freedom, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a very eye-opening statement. Um, there's, you know, nobody else can do what we do. Um, and so that right there sets the stage for, you know, us being able to achieve, you know, the impossible. We keep freedom alive, so we, we, we make sure these ships can go out there for another 25 years. So RCOH with the refueling and complex overhaul is uh, where we take the task on of taking these ships and making them more modernized. That's when we get our chance to make them the most fierce thing out there on the ocean. So 2023 was a very successful year. George Washington was probably one of our greatest feats. We actually uh, RCOH that boat during, throughout COVID. Very difficult. Uh, we actually got the job done. It was something to see those sailors standing on flight deck and you watch that, that ship sail away, you know that you know I did my part. I did a great job of what I do and I made sure that those sailors are going to be safe and they can go out there and defend this country for an additional 25 years. So attacking CBN-74, we've taken the lessons that we've learned from CBN-73. We've also taken some of the great ideas and some of the inclusion of diverse people that we had over there. We brought them over to CBN-74. We are priding ourselves on the fire prevention on this ship, so we have definitely changed a lot of our safety protocols while also meeting those short-term goals or key events and attacking those milestones. Some of those key events do include the radar tower being landed behind the island house, as well as, so for the first time ever, we were able to combine two lifts into one, which is landing the mast. Along with that, we had the anchor chain installation. Um, amazing people are doing some amazing things. The great thing about the shipyard is always continuing with work. So as we prepare for the ship to leave out of dry dock and to make its way to OB-1, we are also planning on the next stage of ship, which is going to be CBN-75, the Harry S. Truman. Uh, we'll actually be working on that over in Norfolk uh, through a smart start period. Try to get ahead of it before it comes over here to dry dock and start the r 2 process. It's so important. The people are what bring you back here. It is a very hard job. It's a very demanding job. But to see these boats take their form, what they do out there on the sea, and how our sailors utilize them to protect each and every one of us, I can be accountable, and I can be responsible for playing my part in the, in the process. pretty surreal. You hear about all these ships being deployed and helping other people in other countries, but actually being a part of it and seeing it come to life is a whole other experience. So down in North Yard, you're putting all the super lifts together, starting to put it together, make it actually look like a ship where on the outside, but on the inside is where we are at here. It'll be bare bones one day and the next day you see it fully furnished. So it's just kind of all coming together. You're starting to see the ship actually come to life. And we have turned over 80% of our compartments, which means that ship's force have bought over 80% of our compartments on this ship. We're working to get to 95% complete by the end of this year. And as far as elevators are concerned, we have several on this ship and testing is progressing quite well. Our aircraft elevators in particular are being put to the test below deck with new systems along with rated load bearing weight on the actual elevators themselves. It's really impressive to see because you realize the important role that they play in delivering fighter jets to and from our flight deck. And speaking of flight deck, that's the place to be if you're looking to satisfy your need for speed.
emuls uh, were at the point of dead load testing, right? They have big orange sleds, right? There's 12 of them. You know, six different weights, simulating different weights of each aircraft throughout the, t the test process, right? We'll shoot multiple shots at varying speeds, at varying weights to simulate, you know, the lightest plane, right, to the fully outfitted, armed up, off the end of the ship. Fire. Yeah, so it's, it's just amazing the, the teamwork that comes along with this, right? I've been doing this for 34 years. Um, I started on Stennis, uh, steam catapults. I transitioned over to Ford, CBN 78. I was part of that team, design, build team. So to see all that stuff come online was just enormous. We learned lessons on CBN 78 that we put into place on CBN 79. We are reaping those benefits and we'll put it into the build and the testing of CBN 80 and 81. Dead loads. You can do all the electrical checks you want, you can do all the close tolerance alignments you want, you can, you can run all the pipe and you can build all the structure, but until you push that button and see that thing go off the front of the ship, man, you've really done something. Enterprise is uh, one of those ships that's been in the fleet for a long time and there's a lot of excitement to get another Enterprise back in the fleet and so that's what we're here to accomplish on CV-80. So right now we're heavy in the erect phase. Uh, last year we met our 25% erect goal and uh, by the end of this year we plan to be at 40% erect. Uh, most recently we erected the super lift that was our first uh, fourth deck to main deck unit. So the ship now sits above the dry dock and in between there the big thing we have coming up is mid-body transfer. We're actually going to make the ship watertight and move it to the west end of the dock and set it back down to uh, continue on through launch. There's a long way to go and we've got our key events along the way and uh, that's kind of what keeps you going. You aim for a key event, you satisfy that one, complete that obstacle, and you go on to the next one. And so bringing the Enterprise back to life, CVN 80, uh, it's very rewarding, exciting to be a part of that, and uh, getting the next Enterprise back in the fleet. Hey, this is awesome, right? What we do here at Nuka News is to defend our nation, and I can't think of a better ship or a better place to work and help, help do that. We as shipbuilders are very excited to bring the Doris Miller CBN 81 to life in the dry dock. You would think, you know, starting a, a carrier would be small, but you know, even from conception, the pieces are huge. And uh, the foundry has poured these massive pieces and we're, we're currently assembling them in the uh, assembly hall, which is a new facility we just built. And um, it's exciting to, to go ahead and have those pieces put together so that we can be ready to put them in the dock. You know, the other ones, you know, you just kind of like, you, you build it and then you had to wait, right? Here today, you know, we, we're going to float one up, move it to the, to the west end and, and start another one. So it's amazing that, that we're able to, to do that and have the, the craftsmen and the equipment and the vendors giving us material and, and components on time so that we can continue to, uh, to build these magnificent ships. There's tons of work that's been going on for years in the background with the, with the modification to the dry dock, the planning, the, uh, the material procurement in the shop, you know, all the work behind the scenes and everything is making all this possible. For also, in addition to, to all that, we, we have set up a Norfolk campus in Norfolk, Virginia that also builds panels and components that will feed into the build of the CVN 81 Doris Miller. That goes to show you how this two ship build process sets us up to be able to do that. And, and here at Newport News, we're proud of what we do. We're, we're the best in the business. We've been building ships for 138 years and we want to continue to do what we do best. And that's real ships.